Now let's look at a question from centrifugal compressor. The question says a centrifugal compressor compresses from 1 bar at 15 degrees Celsius to 2.15 bar at 95 degrees Celsius. The mass of air delivered is 2.2 kg per second. No heat is exchanged between air and external resources during compression. So it means it is adiabatic. Does not necessarily mean it is isentropic also. Find the efficiency of compressor with respect to ideal adiabatic compression. This means that temperature 95 degrees Celsius is not corresponding to the isentropic compression. This means this compression is something uh, you know, that is bound to happen but actually what is happening is this 2 dash. So T1 this would be 15 degrees Celsius. This is something I need to find out T2 and T2 dash is given to us as 95 degrees Celsius. So with respect to this that is actually happening what would be the temperature at this point that is the isentropic efficiency. Okay. We also need to find out the power absorbed during the compression that is the uh, you can say actual compression and then also find the change in entropy of air during compression. Okay. Let us start. So you have T1 let us write down the data T1 is 15 degrees Celsius which is 288. T2 let us put this as 2 and this is 2 dash because 2 dash is generally unknown. Okay. So do not get confused on that. So T2 is 95 which is 368. Okay. T2 dash is not known to me. So P1 is 1 bar. P2 is 2.15 bar. Okay, I can find out T2 dash directly from the isentropic formula or the adiabatic formula and it is given that Q is equal to 0. Means this process is adiabatic but not necessarily isentropic. So to find out T2 dash, I can use this T2 dash into T1 into P2 by P1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma. Okay, so you put in the values, T1 is how much? 288 into 2.15 by 1.4 by 1.4. So when you do that calculation, the T2 dash value comes about to be 358.4 Kelvin. So this establishes that what we are assuming is right. So the T2 dash value is, is less than 358.4 Kelvin. This is less than what you have at 2. Okay. So this is what we assumed. Okay. So given this, now we can find out the isentropic efficiency. So that would be that would be equal to the ideal temperature rise that is T2 dash minus T1 by the actual temperature rise which is T2 minus T1. Okay. So T2 dash is 358.4 minus 288 by T2 which is this 388 minus 288. So this would give you a value of 0 0.80 which is 80% efficiency. So the efficiency of this compression is 80% as compared to this. Now we can find out the uh, power input. So power input would be the work done, the work rate which is equal to m dot cp into t2 minus t1 and that would be t2 dash minus t1 corresponding to the uh, you can say the isentropic uh, you can say uh, compression. So this would be m dot is how much 2.2. So 2.2 into 1.005 that is the Cp for air. T2 dash is how much 358.4 okay minus 288. So that would leave you with a power input of around 156 kilowatts. So this is the power input okay. Now 
we've done the first part and we also need to find out the entropy change for the air during the compression now the entropy change for a process can be estimated or can be used is m dot into cp into natural log t2 by t1 t2 by t1 okay uh, minus r natural log p2 by p1 okay we'll use temperature which is known to us because only this process has a temperature increase oh sorry uh, an entropy increase this is a nice entropy process with no entropy increase or no entropy change i would say okay so this is m dot is 2.2 into cp is 1.005 into natural log t2 is how much 368 by 288 minus r for air is 0.287 so this is 0.287 natural log p2 is how much 2.15 by 1 so this will give you an answer for the entropy change of air during compression and this is the entropy change for a process you should remember this formula okay so this would give you a value of 0.586 kilojoule per kelvin okay so this is how we look at a question like this simple enough draw the diagram for compression put the points or the given data plot this given data onto the chart and see what is to be done it's a very very simple question now after this let's move on to question number 2 in the next video now let us look at question number 2 on centrifugal compressors the question says A centrifugal compressor running at 12,000 RPM delivers 600 meter cube per minute of free air. The air is compressed from one bar and 27 degrees Celsius to a pressure ratio of 4 with an isentropic efficiency of 85%. So this is not an isentropic compression. The blades are radial to the impeller, but of course. outlet and uh, flow velocity of 60 m per second may be assumed constant throughout so vf is constant the outer radius of the impeller is twice the inner one and the slip factor is 0.9 there are four things to find out the first one is the final temperature of air second is the power input to the compressor third is the impeller diode inlet and outlet and the last is the width of impeller at inlet So let's start by writing down the data given to us. So we are given the RPM which is 12000 okay. Then we have the volume flow rate which is 600 meter cube per minute which is 10 meter cube per second. okay the air is compressed from one bar so p1 is one bar how many kpa this is this is 100 kpa okay temperature is 300 kelvin okay to a pressure ratio of 4 so p2 is four bar which is 400 kpa okay the isentropic efficiency is 0.85 okay the flow velocity is constant so let us say vf1 is equal to vf2 which is equal to 60 okay and the outer radius is twice the inner radius so you have r2 is equal to 2r1 so this is given to you and we also have this slip factor 5 which is point time right so this is given to us let find first of all find out the isentropic temperature of the air after compression that would be t2 and that is t1 into p2 by p1 upon gamma minus 1 by gamma so this would become 300 into 
0.4 upon 1.4. So this would give you a T2 of around 445.79 Kelvin. So this is T2. Now we are given the isentropic efficiency, isn't it? So if you apply this formula, 0.85 is equal to the ideal temperature rise that is T2 minus T1. So 445.79 minus T1 which is 300 divided by the actual delta T which is T2 dash minus T1. So from this equation I can easily find out T2 dash that would be the final temperature of air after compression given that your isentropic efficiency is 85%. So T2 dash this is approximately 472. So 471.52 Kelvin. So this is what your final temperature of the air is. So we are done with this particular part of the question. Second is the power input to the compressor. To find out the power input, we need to find out the mass flow rate from the volume flow rate that we have as this 10 meter per second. So the mass flow rate would be P1 into V dot upon R into T1. So P1 is 100 kPa. This is 10 meter cube per second. R is 0.287 for air and T1 is 300. So this would give you M dot and M dot is 11.61 kg per second. Okay. Now to find out power, power input, it's a simple thing which is M dot Cp T2 dash minus T1 and this would give you kilojoule per second or kilowatts. So M dot is how much? 11.61 Cp for air is this, T2 dash is this much 471. 0.52 minus T1 300 okay so this will give you a power input of around 2000 watts or kilowatts this would be 2001.3 kilowatts so this much amount of power has to be given in order to get this kind of performance from your centrifugal compressor now the second part of the question is also done. Now let's come to the third part which is the impeller dia at inlet and outlet. Let us say the impeller dia at inlet is D1 and the outlet is D2. We have the relation between the radii of the inlet and outlet. So the same expression would apply on to the diameter values. Let's start with the outermost that is the D21. So we know that the work done per kg is small w is equal to phi into u2 square. So this is something that you know. And this w has to be found out from this particular part of this equation. So that would give you kilojoule per kg. Okay, so this w is basically Cp into delta T. So w will be equal to around 172.37 into 10 to the power 3 joules per kg. Now why joules? Because this has to be in meters per second, not kilometers per second. Okay, so you put this value over here and find out U2. So U2 is equal to under root W upon 5, which is equal to uh, around 400 so if you write this down, so you'll get 437.63 meters per second. So this is the value of U2, that is the tangential velocity at the outlet. Why did we find this out? Because when once you have U2, U2 is nothing but, uh, you know, uh, omega R2, isn't it? So you can find D2 from there. So U2 is equal to pi into D2 into n upon 60 meters per second. So from here, 
you know the value of u2 you know the value of n so d2 can be easily found out so d2 from here would come out to be approximately 69.65 centimeters you have to convert from meters to centimeters because it will be 0 0.0069 not a very good value to handle so just convert it into centimeters now from d1 you can easily find out d2 because d1 is half of d2 so d1 is half of this okay so you'll get approximately 34.825 again centimeters so you're done with the third part also impeller dia at inlet and outlet last part which is the width of impeller at inlet okay so you have a specific formula for this remember that which is b is equal to volume flow rate v dot upon pi into d1 into vf1 because we need an inlet so the subscript is 1 right so this would give you the value of width as 15.23 centimeters so this finishes the last part of the question so this is how you will get a question on a centrifugal compressor which is full of data write down the data and then proceed with whatever that you have learned so far so it's a very simple question the only thing is it is calculation intensive so I hope you understood question number two. Now let's move on to question number three in the next video.